Advanced Options and Troubleshooting. Up to this point, we have become familiar with the SPICE net listing in Altium Designer. During simulation, if an error is encountered, the message will be displayed in the Messages panel. In this exercise, we will look at the simulation engine's advanced options and how these can affect the output and help us resolve convergence errors. First, download the starting design files underscore advanced options dot zip file from the lesson, extract the files, and open the project troubleshooting dot prj pcb. Once this is open and in the projects panel, we then want to open first the cap bias schematic document, and then we'll go ahead and run the simulation by going to design, simulate, mix sim. We want to locate the listing in the available signals for IN1 and OUT1. Double click on these and this will add them to the active signals list. And then go ahead and click OK. In this example, there are some series capacitors that will cause the simulation to fail. If you recall, all capacitors are open during a bias point calculation. Convergence failure will occur if there is an isolated node that does not have a reference to ground. We take a look in the messages panel which popped up. There can be hints as to what may be causing the problem and in this case we see a warning regarding a singular matrix message calling out nodes C1 underscore 1 and net C1 underscore 1. The circuit then goes on to fail. To try and find the initial bias solution the SPICE analysis engine will sweep the voltage sources and then sweep the conductance using step GMIN. The older method of resolving this type of problem was to temporarily place a large resistor to ground at the specified node. Instead, we will use an option called rshunt that will automatically do this for us for every node to ground just for the bias calculation. Let's set the focus back to the schematic document, and then again go to Design, Simulate, Mix Sim. This time we're going to look down on the left for the advanced options in the analysis setup and click on this. The options will now appear on the right frame and they will be listed alphabetically. You want to go ahead and scroll down to Rshunt. We're going to set this value to 1T. Make sure that is a capital T. Note that when you enter a value, the default box unchecks itself. Don't do it now, but rechecking the box would restore the default value. And you can easily see which options you've changed by looking at the default checkbox to see which are not enabled. I'm going to go ahead and click OK to run the simulation again, and it should now complete without error. Let's go ahead and return to the Projects panel, and this time we're going to open the Rails schematic document. Most op-amp models will have a reversed bias diode across the power rails. If the incorrect voltage is applied, it will cause the diode to turn on and short out the device, resulting in a convergence error. In this design, let's do Design, Simulate, Mix Sim again. This time we're going to find the signals into and out to, and click OK to run the simulation. Check the Messages panel. A message of time step too small will be seen, showing that we are having convergence issues. But this does not give us a lot of information to troubleshoot here. But I suspect, since we are using an op amp, there is a current or voltage issue somewhere. Let's go ahead and return back to the schematic. And looking at pin 4 of U3 on the negative rail, we find that the applied power is positive. This is due to the way the voltage source, V5, is connected, creating essentially a double negative and resulting in a positive value. So we're going to go ahead and select the value for V5. We're going to change it from negative 12 to 12 volts positive. And then we're going to go ahead and rerun that simulation. Same active signals. We should now run without error and we should see the correct amplified results on the output signal. Let's go ahead and return to the projects panel and open the schematic shorted. 
and run the simulation again. We're going to select signals in three and out three for our active signals. And then go ahead and hit OK. Again, look at the error within our messages panel. We find that we have a singular matrix error. And the branch that's mentioned gives us a clue that it is related to current. Now, if we had not enabled the R shunt earlier in the capacitor bias, we would have had a second singular matrix for the isolated secondary, since there is no reference to ground. Let's go back to the schematic here. I'm going to place a resistor from the miscellaneous devices integrated library. Let's look up res1. Press place for that. We're going to hit tab and we're going to change the designator to RS1. We're going to give it a value of 1E-12. that in there and we're going to rerun the simulation and we can see that the simulation will now complete without error and just to get a good comparison let's go ahead and drag this waveform up drop it on there so we can see them together and see that we got the results that we wanted Go back to any one of these project schematics. I'm going to open the simulation preferences again. We go to Design, Simulate, Mix Sim. And from within here, we go to Advanced Options. We're going to note the options ending in TOL. These affect both simulation accuracy and convergence. For each subsequent data point calculation, in order to advance, it must solve the next calculation within the specified tolerances. If the tolerances are too small, the simulation can take considerably longer time to finish and may be unable to solve a calculated data point within the tolerance settings, and the simulation will fail at that point and stop. So we can see here the charge tolerance. You also have the absolute current tolerance. When convergence errors are encountered, to help rule out tolerance settings, it's best to just change these values from 1P and 10F to 1N and 10P respectively, just to see if it helps. Next are the ITL iterators. Let's scroll down here. These specify the total number of attempts at any data calculation before boarding, increasing ITL1 and ITL4 for DC bias and transient calculations can help a solution to be found. For example, we can set ITL3 or ITL1 to 300. We can set ITL4 to 400. And again, note as I change these default values, the check box for default unchecks itself. To set it back to the default value we can simply recheck that box. And as soon as we modify it, the check box again disappears. Other settings uh, which could help with convergence errors, if we find the source step, we can decrease this uh, by half to 5. We could set the ramp time value uh, to some really small value. Now at the bottom of the options page, notice that there are some additional settings here at the bottom. The integration method by default will be trapezoidal. When running a simulation and you observe unexpected ringing, changing the integration method to gear may help. The default trapezoidal method is oftentimes faster than gear but ringing can occur. Your SPICE reference net name. The value here will be converted to a zero ground reference required by SPICE. The default is GND and matches the default GND port assigned net. Digital supply VCC and VDD. 
When using a digital part in Altium Designer, the power rails are typically hidden and attached to nets VCC and VDD. These net values are assigned here and a supply source is not necessary. Lastly, back in the advanced options area here, the temperature settings are temp and TNOM. To change the default temperature from 27 degrees Celsius, just go ahead and set the value to what you would like it to be.